I've never asked anybody for money for a deal. I've never asked anybody for money. And people say, well, Jay, how do you have eight and a half million dollars in private money that you move from project to project? And here's the way it works. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Conner. We have a, a fellow whose name on his Zoom box is Banjo. His real name is Eric Carmadale. Banjo, are you able to unmute and say hello while you're driving that vehicle? Yeah, Jay, what's up? Hey, man. Um, I, it's not often I get to look at you through the backside of your steering wheel, so it's, <laughs> it's nice to see you. Um, so y'all, uh, Banjo uh, and his wife, Erica, um, we started working together, um, I guess it was two years ago, October 2020, I believe it was. And uh, Banjo, you were full-time working for the railroad. How long was your commute each way? An hour and 36 minutes. So you commuted in the morning, an hour and 36 minutes to go to work for the railroad. Then you'd come home in the evening, an hour and 36 minutes. And so when we started working together, you were full-time railroad. How many hours a week were you working, not including the commute? Was it a 40-hour deal? Yep, it was about a 40-hour deal. So I'd wake up at 3.30 in the morning, and I'd end up getting home around 4.30 yeah. most of the time. Yeah. So, you know, we started working together. Um, uh, actually, you were working with me and uh, Crystal and Chaffee. And uh, you and uh, your wife, Erica, um, immediately became Platinum and Mastermind members. But the point of what I'm wanting to ask you, first of all, within that first year, I know you all raised like a crazy amount of private money. You did a, a lot of, you know, deals. Uh, how much private money have you all raised so far to date? Erica might have the number on that one. I believe it's 1.2 or 1.3 million. Okay, so over a million dollars. You've done a ton of deals. You got a lot of equity. So that's your background. Let's come back to Marvin's challenge. How in the world did you drive an hour, over an hour and a half, spend over three hours a day on the on the highway? Work full time at the railroad. By the way, everybody, since that time, Banjo's already retired from the railroad, quit the day job, full time real estate investing all the way. Oh, there's Erica. Hey, Erica, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were with us. You're just by. So unmute, Erica. Uh, say hello to everybody. Hey, y'all. <laughs> how much private money have you raised and how much equity and profit y'all got since we started working together? I think it's 1.2 million for private lending. I'm not sure about profit and equity. It's, it's up it's, there. <laughs> it's high enough that you lost count. So yeah. um, I'm glad you're here, Erica. Thank you for being here. So Banjo, how did you and Erica find the time to do this thing, working the full-time job at the railroad? So Chaffee hit the nail on the head. It's all about priorities. And what really helped me was I worked a desk job. And anytime I was able to do what I'm doing now, kind of multitask, I'm driving and I'm listening to the PMA, right? So I'd be at work. I'd be on the accountability calls. I would uh, be on the platinum calls. I'd have one earpiece in and I'd be doing my, my desk work. Um, otherwise, if I, if I might miss one, which I didn't do often, but I got an hour and a half drive. I could just listen to the recording on an hour and a half drive, constantly making the program and private money a priority. I remember I heard a guy once say, what you think about when you wake up and before you brush your teeth or as you're brushing your teeth in the morning is who's going to be my next private lender today. And that's literally, you know, how it was. And, I, the main thing that helped me, though, was that I dedicated a certain amount of time for a certain amount of days every single week, whether it be on certain days or every day or whatever it was, be very, very specific about it. Uh, and and I dedicated, for me, it was at least two hours per day on the business in the beginning. 
So I don't care what was going on. I was going to disappear from my life and concentrate 100% and focus 100% of my um, concentration on the business for at least two hours a day. And that worked really, really well. Well, you said a very powerful word a moment, a second ago, and that was the word focus. And, uh, and you know, you're very intentional, as Crystal said, and you made the time for it. Erica, your thoughts on this topic? Um, well, for the question, my, I guess my question is, he's busy doing what? Because <laughs> if he's too busy, you can't be too busy to raise private money, because if you're busy with other people, that's the perfect time to raise private money. Banjo, Erica, whoever wants to jump in on this, let me read it to you. I'll read it nice and slow so you can digest what uh, Rios is saying. She says, hi, Jay. First of all, I want you to know that you and your wife, Carol Joy, are very inspiring. Thank you, Rios. And I promise to get involved as soon as I can, um, et cetera, et cetera. Here's my response to your question. I am a loner and I don't know where to begin to find this private money. The little bit of people I do know are hardworking and are barely making ends meet. I don't want to sound so gloomy, but that's pretty much where I'm at. I do know that I need to get out of my own way because I need to start making dollars ASAP for my own well-being, but I just don't have any dollars to get started with right now. What do I do? So, Chaffee first, Crystal second, Manjo Erica third, if there are any comments on this. So when I unpack what Rios is saying, uh, to summarize what she said, she's saying that she thinks she's got no warm market. So y'all can define what the warm market is. She, she's saying she doesn't have a warm market. Um, and since she doesn't have a warm market, or at least she thinks, she thinks. She does not have a warm market. Uh, what do you do about that for someone that thinks they don't have much of a warm market? And where can she? So all it comes down to is where can she find private lenders? Jeff, it's about who you know. It's about who they know. And so you might not know a lot of people that have money. And when you approach them, as 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 Jay says in his book, it's do you or anybody you know have investment uh, investment funds not doing what they wanted to do. And so it's, it's a lot of times when you start talking about private money, a lot of the, the people that you're talking to might not have anything. You might be correct. And you never know who they might know. They might have an aunt. They might have an uncle. They might know somebody else that has money sitting around that they can make that introduction to you. And so that's important because you got to understand is that when you want something to happen, you have to tell everybody you know about it in order for it to happen. And the more people you tell, the more likely it's going to happen. And so there's a story about this gentleman that wants to meet Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres was like his idol. His like He wanted to meet her, and he had no idea how to meet her. And so everywhere he went, he was just like, you know, it's my dream to meet Ellen. I'm going to meet Ellen one day. I'm going to make it happen. I don't know how. I'm just going to make it happen. And so he went around and told everybody. I'm going to meet Ellen DeGeneres. I don't know how it's just going to happen. I'm, I'm going to figure it out. And six months later, everybody he knew and everybody he didn't knew heard about him wanting to meet Ellen DeGeneres. Right? And he attended, he was invited to this dinner party and there were eight people there. And so he goes on again, six months later, just like, oh, it's my dream. I love Ellen so much. I want to meet her. Well, it turns out one of those people at that dinner was the producer of Ellen's show. And you know what he did? Well, he introduced that guy to Ellen DeGeneres as one of her biggest fans. And so that never would have happened if he would not have just said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to meet her somehow, some way and tell everybody in the world about it. And so when it comes to private money, when you're using Jay's system and offering help and, and offering people an opportunity to raise more money, the more people you tell, the more chances that it's going to happen that somebody's going to want to give you money to invest with because that's a benefit to them as well. Vicky Rios believes she does not have much of a warm market and does not know what to do. Absolutely. So, um, 
So I always hate going second because, you know, 50% of your answer at the bare minimum is already gone. But thank you anyway. Uh, so, so I will add my layer. And that is, um, one, I'm an introvert by nature. So I am not somebody that wants to be out and talking to everybody and that kind of thing. So one of the ways that you teach to um, raise private money is to create a new warm market right? And so I was really resistant to that because I don't love that idea. But you do, you just like Chappie said, you create who you are. You determine who that is based on what you think. So I made up my mind that I was going to be a great networker and I'm a great networker. That's what I do. I get out, I network, I build a, a whole other market. So that works for every aspect of this business, but certainly in the private money world, getting out, communicating and talking to those people, you now do have an ent entire warm market right there. And it's a completely different group of people. And once again, to echo what Chappie said, you, one of the things that we try to teach people, um, our students, like day one is do not pre-screen people. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think you know. I don't care what you do know. There's still pieces that you don't know. Forget about it. So you don't pre-screen people. So right off the get-go, tell every single person that you can plant seeds. You just, you have to get the word out and then figure out where that's going to land. I had people in the beginning that didn't have any money, but they actually inherited money three years later and came back to me and said, hey, remember that thing you were talking about? Can you help me now? Duh. I mean, if I had, if I had gone to the mindset of like, well, my people don't have money, those poor people wouldn't have had that opportunity. And the people that you really are closest to, if you really indeed have a very small, warm market, they need to know about this because when they're in a position where they could do something, you want to help those people. So tell everyone, talk often, connect and Create a different vision of who you are and what it is you do. You're a private money teacher. Eric and Erica, um, something that, that I want you to share that will actually shed light on not having a warm market to talk to people about private money. So you all have conducted multiple private lender luncheons within the last two years. And so like after you've had one, two or three private lender luncheons, it's like everybody, you know, you've invited to private lender luncheons and they're either coming or they're not coming. By the way, folks, at a private lender luncheon, you're teaching the private lending program, right? We're going to go over all that in detail at the live event. So you're teaching the private lending program at the private lender luncheon. So, but, Eric and Erica, you're still doing private lender luncheons like whatever, every three months, whatever it is. Yeah. You've exhausted your original warm market list. So here's another way to answer this question. I don't have a warm market. Well, you all do have a warm market, but you've exhausted your warm market. How do you still get people coming to a private lender luncheon after you've exhausted your warm market list? Yep. So we have a private lender luncheon Tuesday and I had to tell Eric to chill out with how many people he is inviting because <laughs> he has met so many new people in the past three months. <laughs> um, for me, so to kind of backtrack and answer her question a little bit as well. Um, I'm an introvert. Crystal, it's hard to go third. OK, so I'm an introvert. <laughs> And I had horrible self-confidence when I started this program. And so for me, it was really hard to just speak to people about anything, much less about private lending. So I started off with um, just talking to friends and family. And then it kind of graduated to people at church, people that I knew a little bit better. And now I'm talking to people who are walking in the grocery store. Like we're talking to everyone. Um, Eric is in some, some rotary clubs and things like that. So I would say to, to, I mean, I'm not an introvert and I guess Erica kind of leaned on her warm market, me to be the person that's going to go out and talk to people. But I would say, I, I think this would work for an introvert. Tap into your servant's heart 
And you, what you have is a product that you have to believe in. So first believe in what we have. Our private lending program is phenomenal, especially right now. I have a, the, my, my latest private lender is head over heels for this program. She's telling everybody about it. She can't believe it. I've doubled her interest. She was, she had a, some um, money in, in the, uh, I don't even know what it was, but she was making about 4%. Now she's making 10% and she's absolutely ecstatic about it. And so as time, it's, it's hard in the beginning, I remember it hard. It was hard to understand how beneficial it was for everybody else because it's so beneficial for the real estate investor as well. But I promise you, you believe in your program, then you can lead with a servant's heart. And it's kind of like your moral obligation to help these people out. And so that would help you overcome your 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 um, timidness and stuff like that. And then I'll and I'll and I'll end with a story. So I was we, we do martial arts and I was behind the alley in the back door and we were just hanging out with the kids. And I heard somebody dump trash in the trash can on the other side of the fence. It was a big dumpster and I heard big crash and I went, hey, and they hit yelled back and they put, put, peek, peek, peeked their head around the fence and they, 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 what's going on? I said, nothing much, man. So my thinking was somebody's throwing trash in the dumpster. They must own one of these companies around here. So I'm going to go <laughs> get, chat it up with them. Sure enough, him and his wife own the company across the street. Guess what? Him and his wife, I called them. I invited them to the private lending luncheon at that point, but he they're coming October 4th. They're going to be in Poplarville at my private lender luncheon. And he's super excited when I go on the phone. So talk to anybody and everybody, every chance you get. So the moral of that story, folks, is if you ain't got no warm market, go to the trash dumpster behind your office, wait for people to dump trash, start a conversation, invite them to your private lender luncheon, and they'll be your next $500,000 private lender. Eric and Erica, you get the PMA golf clap for that story right there. Thank you for sharing. I tell you what, folks, there's some amazing nuggets in these stories. Amazing nuggets. All right, let's move on to the next one. Michael. Canuccio, I apologize if I'm pronouncing the last name right. Um, Michael sent in and he says, "My the most confusing thing to me about private money, what's holding me back is how to find the prospective lenders in your sphere of influence. So how to identify. So here's the question. How do I identify my top people in my warm market, my sphere of influence? that I want to talk to, and how do I present the private lending program to them? How do I teach them the private lending program? Um, so we'll reverse the order. Uh, Eric and Erica, you get to go first, then Crystal, then Chaffee. Again, how do you identify the people in your warm market that you want to talk to first, and how do you present the private lending program? Eric and Erica. So... I wouldn't, uh, I really wouldn't decide on quote unquote, who to talk to first, honestly, because that kind of does what Crystal said not to do, which is screen the people that you want to talk to. Like, ah, oh, they probably don't have money. Ah, oh, they're not going to be open to this stuff. It doesn't matter. Write down a list of anybody and everybody, you know, Erica has another, another thing she did too, that worked really well. But for me, it was like, I mean, of course the program helped, uh, to the ticker list to help you just Think about all these people you know, your doctor, your car salesman, your real estate uh, agent that helped you buy your house. I mean, just anybody, everybody that you have. And then um, you get out there and you ask them basically if they have any uh, investment capital or retirement funds that's not making them a high rate of return. And if if so, then they might want to listen to what you have to say because you got some some awesome, you know, awesome thing for them to, to take advantage of. And so Erica and I did that in the beginning and we just call, I, I called and called and called and then I'll let you tell them what you did. Yeah. So for me, I chose to do the indirect method. Um, Jay gives us a script to, to use. And so what I did is I just contacted people on, uh, on Facebook and we literally went alphabetical order. <laughs> so we didn't screen anybody out and chances are you're going to 
like see people on that list. Oh yeah, I could talk to them. Oh yeah, I could talk to them. So you might as well not waste your time trying to screen anybody and just talk to everyone. And so as far as like presenting the private lender program, you're not doing that unless they ask. So I have one time out of all of my private lenders and all of my potential private lenders, one time set all my program. And it's just simply because they asked. How about about. turning off this light? So when we were, when I sat down with them to, when I sat down with them to initially just kind of present the idea, uh, it kind of went like this. Hey, it was a guy in the gym um, that I go to and I seen him sitting there. He brings his daughter all the time. I sat next to him. I said, Hey man, I really admire your um, dedication and your discipline to be able to bring your daughter here week after week, day after day. I've seen you in here every day. And that's the kind of person that I would like, you know, wouldn't mind having in my business. I don't know if you know or not, but me and Erica do real estate and we have, uh, you know, I, I told him the whole thing about the high rates of return and all that good stuff. And he was interested. Well, right off the bat, he goes, oh, well, what kind of rates are you giving? Well, I'm not going to like tap the brakes and say, well, you got to find out at the private lender luncheon. So we sat there for about 30 minutes and I just told him the whole program, but he was the only one that ever happened with everybody else. They're, they're interested in it. And then they want to either listen to the, you know, you use the tools, the 16 minute CD or the webinar or get invited to the private lender luncheon at that point, And that's when you present the, or sometimes they'll want a one-on-one. They won't have time at that point in time when, when we're on the phone and we'll set up a one-on-one, go meet at a coffee shop or something go through the whole thing. Crystal, how do you identify who to talk to and how do you present the program? And Chaffee, uh, I will be giving you another question from another PMA member. So Crystal will wrap us up on this question. Yep. Um, so, you know, obviously I'm going to be the person that's going to say don't free screen because that's what I teach, <laughs> teach and every one of our students all the time. Um, so, but I would, I would caveat that by saying, Think of every single person that you know, no matter what, put them down. You then have the opportunity. You can screen through it and organize them based on how you want to use the tools to share with them. So leverage the tools. Jake gives you all the tools. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So starting off with a CD or an MP3. So I used to send out five um, every day, leveraging time, right? So I had Zippo time, but boy, I could send out five quick emails every day before I left that house. Um, and so I did, I would send out the MP3 version of the CD recording that Jay creates for all of his students. Um, and then, and just do a, a quick, you know, touch with people. And, there, and of course we have tons of other avenues to do that now. That's, you know, it's been years, but you know, so we can do that on Facebook. We can reach out and make connections that way through messenger, et cetera. So, you know, leverage your time and leverage your opportunities and connect with people where, you know, meet people where they want to be met. Um, so, you know, you're going to have people that are going to be in your phone that you just don't talk to, but maybe you text them or maybe you people that you work with that you don't go meet up with them and have coffee regularly, but you certainly email them enough times every day. So meet people where they want to be met, um, leverage your opportunity and your time and connect with everybody that you can. And if you're going to do any sort of screening, then I would really just make it around, Hey, who are the people that would make the most sense to invite to my private lender luncheon? Clearly they're not going to be people that live in, you know, two States away. So you can screen through and invite those people. And, or are they people you network with regularly? Great. They're going to be great people to invite. Who do I want to invite to a webinar? Somebody who does live two States away, who is not going to be in my immediate network. So you can screen that way and look for opportunities, but overall, every everybody you can and look for all the opportunities and really leverage the tools that Jay provides for you. So Ernesto sends me, um, quite an email here, but here's the summary of his question, Chavi. Are my private lenders to be involved in the deal making or negotiation of buying a property? So should my private lenders be involved in the negotiation and buying of a property? Or do we just present them the deal and let them decide if they want to fund it? So the, the answer is neither. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, 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 no. But tell them why, Chappie. That's right. So first and foremost, you, you are not looking for a partner. You, you are not looking for somebody 
to be a part of this deal and to uh, uh, ask a bunch of questions and to divert your attention. You are the expert. You are the real estate professional. And so you want most of your private lenders are usually busy professionals or people that have lives that are too busy to worry about anything except not guaranteed, secured, my apologies, secured and collateralized um, rates of return. And so they're busy living their life. And so they don't need to know what's going on or the real estate deals. They just need to know that you're going to pay them on time and their money is safe and secure. And so those are the kind of individuals you're looking for, like busy, you know, maybe it's, it's an attorney that's working 60 hours a week, maybe a physical therapist like uh, Crystal was that's working 80 hours a week. And they know that they have money sitting around that wants to earn a high rate of return. Those are the people that you want to really be your private lenders because they're so busy that they're entrusting you with their money and you doing what you need to do to pay them those higher rates of return. So secondly, which was, what was the second question again, Jay? <laughs> well, yeah, the, the second question is, um, sh- or, or should I just present them the go. deal and let them decide and boy, <laughs> I got a comment on that, but you go, Chabby. <laughs> so so I'll, I'll be real quick. And as you always say, Jay, get the money first, right? You don't want to be presenting any kind of deal to anybody. You want to be offering an opportunity for them to get higher rates of return on their money. And when you have a deal and you present it to people, now you're coming across as somebody that needs something because now you need money in order to do this deal. And that's not what you're all about. You're about offering an opportunity to help people get higher rates of return versus coming across of, I got a deal. Now I need some money. Will you help me? Right. That's a whole different mentality. It's a whole different vibe energy that comes across. You again are are offering an opportunity. And so never present deals, talk in generals and offer an opportunity. Exactly. Chavi. So listen, everybody right now, do not miss this. Do not miss this. As Chavi just said, this is 180 degrees on borrowing private money from the way you do it traditionally from the bank. Traditionally from the bank, if you're walking into Mr. or Mrs. Banker to get a mortgage, to borrow money for real estate, you're walking in traditionally, you sit in front of their desk, you get down on your hands, on your knees, and you put your hands underneath your chin, and you say, please, Miss Banker, please, Miss Banker, would you please fund my deal, please? In this world, none of that happens. For example, listen, I've never asked anybody for money for a deal. I've never asked anybody for money. And people say, well, Jay, how do you have eight and a half million dollars in private money? that you move from project to project. And here's the way it works. Chavi just said it. First, I teach my new potential private lenders, people I know and meet. I haven't met a private lender at the trash dump yet, but I look forward to that day. (laughs) I teach people what private money and private lending is. At the end of that teaching, which takes about 20 or 25 minutes on teaching the private lender program, they then, I mean, they're chasing me. They want to get involved. And listen, I don't have a deal that I am presenting or pitching. I've never pitched. I never pitched a deal in my life. So they learn the private lending program. They tell me how much they have to invest. Is it investment capital? Is it retirement funds? Is it both? Do I need to introduce them to my self-directed IRA rep at Quest? They've got the money ready to go and they're biting at the bit like a horse wanting to get out of the gate and loan money. So now I know how much they've got. Now what happens next? I then have a deal. It might be in two days, three days, two weeks, three weeks. I have a deal for them to fund. I do not pitch the deal to them. What do I do? Here's exactly what I do. Don't miss this. I pick up the phone. I call them. Here's the exact script. I say, let's say, um, let's say Alan is my private lender. Alan has told me how much money he's got to invest. I know how much he's got. I call up Alan. I say, Alan, I've got great news for you. I can now put your money to work. 
I have a house in Newport with an after repaired value of $200,000. The funding required, I didn't say needed, I said required. The funding required for this deal is $150,000. I know Alan's got $150,000. He already told me. The funding requires $150,000. Closing is next Thursday, so I need you to have your funds wired to my real estate attorney by next Wednesday. You notice in that script, I did not ask Alan if he wanted to do the deal. That would be the most stupid question in the world I could ever ask Alan. I know he wants to do the deal. He's been waiting for me to call him to put his money to work. That's why I start out my script by saying, hey, Alan, I got great news. I can now put your money to work. I tell him where the house is located, the township, not the physical address, he could care less, the after repaired value, the funding required, and when he needs to have his funds wired to my closing agent. End of conversation, right? And Alan does what he is told to do because he's been waiting. Do you see how I did not call up Alan, get down on one knee, bow my head in prayer, and beg him to fund my deal? That's not the way it works. I am serving Alan, and it's a win-win scenario, and I'm not asking whether Alan wants to do the deal because I know how much money he's got. I'm telling him the deal that fits the private lending program, and Alan wires his funds. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.